Yes. <laughs> we've done some shopping. So we we filled our cupboard up, not with food, but with God's word. Oh, I made it out of a cardboard box. Thank you. 
you're going to Kingdom Kids, now's the time to get your coats on and uh, off you go to Kingdom Kids. And as the children get ready to go, uh, we'll pray for them. Father God, we thank you for the children and we pray for them as they go off to Kingdom Kids. We pray for Chrissy and uh, Jane as they uh, lead and we pray that today they will learn something special uh, about you, that they'll learn something from your word that they'll be able to remember in their hearts and in their minds so that this will help them in the coming week. So go with them, we pray and help them today. Amen. Um, in the last uh, church meeting, uh, we had some exciting things happen, and uh, Jackie, our organist Jackie, has become a member of our church, and, uh, and also Sharon, our singer, has been uh, elected to be a new deacon. So, I'm now going to ask the elders to come forward, and I'm going to ask you folks to come and stand here, just stand here, <laughs> and we're going to welcome them and pray for them. I'm going to ask Gordon to pray for Jackie, and then I'll ask Andrew to pray for Sharon, is that alright? So, um, it's traditional in uh, churches uh, from the New Testament uh, teaching that when someone becomes a member of the church, that we give them the right hand of fellowship. So I'm just going to say, welcome, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're really pleased to have Jackie um, deciding to become a member with us. And so I'd like uh, Gordon now to pray for Jackie. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your care over us all. We thank you for your care over Jackie. We thank you that she's chosen to, to worship here and we're, we're delighted that she's made this further step. We're delighted to see her. We're delighted that, and we, we thrill in the way she leads us in worship most Sundays. But we love her for you because you love her and we love her as a child of God. And so uh, we're, we're delighted that she's taken this further step and we, we pray for the, the months and the years ahead as whatever time we have together, that it will be great for her and great for us as a member of the church family here. Amen. 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 I just want to thank you for Sharon and we thank you for all that she has done in, in being a member of our church. Uh, we thank you for her joy that she shares with us. We also thank you for her family that she brings along with her. And Father, also we want to commit to especially uh, the way ahead for her. We pray for um, job prospects for her and also for your help and your blessing and that you'd make her a blessing where she is as well as being a blessing to us in this church. Amen. 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 Yeah. We'll use this just for our prayers today and it coincides with um, what, was, what was in the, in the paper. Now I, I get the Guardian for a bit of nice left-wing indoctrination every day. Um, <laughs> But, and they're running a little thing every week about funny things children say to do with the Lord's Prayer. Yeah? And like, start. Our Father who does art in heaven. <laughs> Harold is thy name. Yeah? <laughs> and then another day, sort of, please uh, uh, deliver us from eagles or deliver us from emails. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the Guardian this week has been political, political. But there was a bit which I really, really didn't like. Really didn't like. The bit, in the name of God, go. I really thought, that's just misusing the name of God. I really didn't like that. Even though, you know, I agree with the sentiments, but the, the way it was used and replayed again and again. And it's like when you've got people say, OMG, oh my God. I really dislike that. I thought, in contrast to the reverence of the Lord's Prayer, the, sort of the way it's taken in vain, I thought, that's not good. So we're just going to go quickly through the prayer, and then we're gonna, we'll say, I won't get you to say it and, and switch it off the screen. We'll keep it up there, all right? <laughs> the first bit. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Heavenly Fathers, help us to make sure 
we continue to recognise who you are. Help us to recognise and remember how holy and hallowed is your name. Let us be the ones to lead the way in recognising that we can truly say, oh my God, in the right and reverent way. Amen. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Heavenly Father, we look forward to the reign of your kingdom. We pray that it's here on earth. Things will be done in the ways that you would want. And we pray for situations where they are not done here in the UK and around the world. Heavenly Father, we pray for this situation in Ukraine, this looming man-made disaster. We pray that sensible people will try and avert the catastrophe that could happen. Amen. Amen. Give us today our daily bread. Heavenly Father, we ask for provision of bread for everyone. We pray that we will remain thankful and appreciative. Help us be content with basic bread and not ask for the extras for cake and things we don't really need. Father, we pray for those who are really struggling, families and individuals here in the United Kingdom, this country with all its relative wealth, people not having enough bread. And Father, I think at the moment about the situation in Tonga where the, the, the natural disaster would have made things so different and such a struggle. We pray that the world community will come to the rescue of your people there. Amen. Amen. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Heavenly Father, help us to be humble and conscious of our need for your forgiveness. Just quietly now, everyone in the in the room this morning, just bring, bring something which you might need to be forgiven and forgive someone for. Just do it quietly in your heart now. So Heavenly Father, help us extend your forgiving attitude to all who we have contact with. Amen. Amen. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Heavenly Father, help us to remember you are an all-seeing, all-knowing God. Help us to live in such a way that you are proud of us, your children. Protect us from the temptations all around us. Amen. Amen. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Yes, Heavenly Father, we recognise your glorious, eternal future that we have in your kingdom. Whatever else is going on, your kingdom is indeed forever and we are in it. Amen. Amen. Let's all say it all together, shall we now? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our next song is May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day, by his love and power controlling all I do and say. And the second um, verse is very appropriate for today. May the word of God dwell richly in my heart from hour to hour, so that all may see I triumph only through his power. So as we think about this transforming power of God's word today, and uh, as we've learned earlier, we need to store God's word in our heart so that it has an effect on our lives. Um, Christ and my Saviour live in me from day to day.
verses 1 to 5. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Amen. Great, thank you. What a, what a joy it is to see uh, this, this room with uh, so many folk in. It's great to see you this morning. And if you're here for the first time, as uh, some of you may be, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, as we have been saying, as Sil has been saying, we're uh, looking at a, a series under the general heading of Be Authentic. And today we've come to the second in that series. But just because the first was a couple of weeks ago, I uh, just wanted to remind people of what we said then. Uh, we were looking at Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 10. And one of the things, we had three headings there. What do we see? What do others see? And what does God see? And sometimes we see our mistakes. And we see our comparisons with other people. Oh, I'm not as bad as him. She's so much better than me. I could never do this, and so on. That's what uh, we, we get tied up in. But the important thing and the thing we ended up with is, what does God see? One of the things he sees is our hearts. Our hearts. He also sees our failures, but he, he gives us his grace. And as we looked at Galatians uh, 6, verses 7 and 8, we read, the, we read these words, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. You see, some of us think we can cover up from God, but we can't. A man reaps what he sows. What, whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So we can't hide from God. But what we do will have an impact. And uh, I didn't touch on the words that are underlined there two weeks ago, but just a quick reminder. If we sow to the flesh, if we do not obey what God wants, then we will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So it's important how we live. It's important to be authentic. It's important not to hide from God. Sil has mentioned that we felt led for the period leading up to just before Easter. We're going to have an additional time of prayer face to face. Some people like to meet face to face rather than on Zoom. And we're going to do that each Tuesday. Uh, from 1 o'clock to 1.45. And some people uh, tend to say, but I, I, I do pray, but I pray on my own. Let me just say, it would be a great encouragement to others to get together to pray. There are some people, and they know who they are, who when they pray, they really rejoice, not only my heart, but the heart of others who are there. Because their prayers are from the heart. And we appreciate that. And some people say, but what's the point in me praying? God knows what's in my head and in my heart anyway. Those of us who are married, would we say that to our spouses? I don't need to tell you that I love you because you know that it's in my heart. And maybe some of us would, should say that a bit more. But God loves to hear us vocalizing, loves to hear us 
praying out loud if we can. Having said that, some people find that difficult in a larger group on Zoom or whatever. So we'll be just, there'll just be a few of us getting together in the Hope Center on Tuesdays. If you can come, please uh, come and join with us there. This week, we're looking at be transformed. What does transform mean? Changed. To be changed. I have three headings that I, I, I just want us to look at today. Renamed, reborn, and a heart transplant. Sorry, I haven't got a re in there, but uh, rehearted? No, it doesn't work. A heart transplant. Renamed, reborn, and a heart transplant. There are too many med medical people here for me to get into the mechanics of a heart transplant. So first of all, in those uh, verses that Val read to us, do not conform. Verse two was this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Be transformed. So it's an active thing. It's something that we need to give ourselves to. We're going to look, as we go through this series, we're going to look at the life of Peter to illustrate some of what we're saying. This week, we're going to look at transformation of the heart rather than of the mind. Don't worry, we're not going to lose that. We'll come to mind next week because it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have already had quite a bit of mention of heart today, and we're going to look at that as uh, we, we proceed. But during this series, as I've said, we're going to look at the life of Peter. And Peter is, if, if you haven't read the, the, the verses in the Gospels and in Acts about Peter, I would encourage you to do so. And in fact, on our Wednesdays on Zoom, we'll be looking at some of the passages relating to Peter's life. And what we're going to do today, and Steve's going to help me with this in a moment, we're going to look at Jesus' first encounter with Peter, or Peter's first encounter with Jesus. From his seat, in his normal, good, loud voice, Steve is going to read to us the verses from John 1, uh, 35 to 42. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him, they said this, they followed Jesus, turning round. Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John, what John said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which means translated Peter. Thank you, Steve. So in this first encounter with Jesus, there are a couple of lessons I think that we can learn there. And this is the very start of Peter's journey. I know all of us are on a journey, a journey with Jesus. Some are at the very start of that journey. And some are further along the journey. And as we unpack some of Peter's life, we'll see that this was only the start. But how did, it, how did it begin? Well, it began because, first of all, he had to meet Jesus. And I wonder if for some of us, we know about Jesus. We know and we have maybe in our store cupboard from a long time ago, we've got 
passages of Scripture and we, we, we read about it, but we haven't really had that encounter with Jesus. Do you remember what uh, Steve read to us? They went to him, and it was his brother Andrew, his younger brother, who went to find him. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said. The first thing Andrew did was to go and find his brother and tell him. Now, I don't know if your journey has started. Who was that Andrew? Who was that person who first introduced you to Jesus? Are you going to be the Andrew for somebody else to introduce them to Jesus? Because we need to meet him. We need to meet him more than in just a superficial level. The second thing we see in this short passage of, of uh, this first encounter with Jesus, we need to allow Jesus to change us. We can't do it for ourselves. We can't do it for ourselves. And Peter was renamed by Jesus. You're Simon, son of John, Jesus said. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Simon is a bit like the word for to hear. He heard. But Cephas or Peter, two different languages, but the same word, mean rock. And Simon was renamed by Jesus. He was renamed Peter. He was renamed as the rock. But as we look through Peter's life, we'll see that he didn't always behave like a rock. He wasn't always constant in his following of Jesus. But that's where it started. That transformation began in his life. And as I was thinking about this, I felt I wanted to uh, look at some very familiar words that we have in John chapter 3. John chapter 3, if you happen to have your Bible or your phone or something with you, you could have a look at it. But it's the story of Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus. Where Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Jesus in verse 3 of John 3 said, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. So this transformation has a start. With Peter, it was renaming. In this encounter with Nicodemus, it was being reborn. And Nicodemus, you can read John 3 for yourselves. Jesus had this dialogue with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was an intelligent man. He said, how can this happen? Rebirth. You can't enter into the womb of your mother and be born. And Jesus said these words, very truly, I say to you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So for this transformation to happen, we need to be reborn. We need to have God's Holy Spirit impact us to change us. And many of us know that because we have friends, we have relatives, we have those whom we love so dearly who don't seem to see the same things in God's word that we do. They are, Jesus says in, in another place, they're spiritually blind. They need this rebirth. Uh, if we are these Andrews taking people to meet Jesus, remember that we must pray that Jesus' Spirit will enter in and that they will experience new birth. We've had a privileged time in this church over the last couple of years with uh, a couple of people connected with the church who have come to faith in Jesus for the first time. And that's great. And we pray for those folk, and I'm not going to name them just now, we pray for those folk that they will experience the Holy Spirit working in their lives and will come as we 
as we go further into this series, we'll come to ways in which God can do that. But Scylla has very graphically pointed out to us today some of the things to store up God's word. Where? In our hearts, that we might not sin against you. We've got transformation, but as, as this passage says, as Jesus said, the spirit gives birth to spirit. And finally, if we're going to be transformed, we need a heart transplant. I was uh, struck, those of us who were able to attend the covenant service last week may remember these words from Jeremiah that uh, Janet uh, read last week at the service. Included in that reading was, were these words, where Jeremiah said, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. God's covenant with his covenant people, Israel. But that covenant is with us too today. He will write his law on their hearts. But in order to do that, we need to know what his law is. Hence, Scylla's cupboard to read God's word. In another place, another of the Old Testament prophets talks about the heart transplant. He says this in Ezekiel 36. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will give you, he says, a new heart. Have we got that new heart? Have we experienced God's uh, work in us to change our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. We've been looking at some uh, Old Testament uh, stories in Genesis and Exodus, and we came to the story of the plagues as we were reading today. And Pharaoh was faced with what God did for the children of Israel, he brought a plague of frogs. And he pleaded with, uh, with Moses and he said, please, please pray to your God and ask him to take these frogs. And he did. And they killed them all and the stench was terrible. He said, if you do that, I will let you worship your God. But scripture says, his heart was hardened, and he didn't do that. How is your heart? Is God's Holy Spirit wanting to work with you today? Have you been renamed, but are you struggling? Have you been reborn, but you've got a hardness of heart? And one uh, illustration that uh, was given how we face difficult times sometimes. You don't have the attitude to the sun in this country that you do in uh, tropical countries, that they will be doing in uh, Tonga at the moment, where the sun will be beating down and it will be so warm, so harsh. And somebody has said that the same sun can come on a heart that is made of flesh or made of, of uh, wax, and the sun will melt that heart and make it soft. But if you've got a heart made of clay, what will the sun do? It will bake it. It will bake it and make it hard. And one of our prayers, I think, today is that God will give us a soft heart, that he will give us a heart of flesh, a heart that will reach out to him for those things that, that are burdening us, that are getting us down, and say, God, you are a God who can transform me, and you can transform my situation. 
I pray that you might do that. Renamed. The start of the journey for Peter. He had a long, long way to go. Reborn. Nicodemus had to find that out from the master himself. To be born of the Spirit. A heart transplant. How is our heart? Are we prepared not just to learn the verse that Scylla gave us earlier? Do you want to try? I'll start you. I have stored up your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. Psalm 119 verse 11. Are you prepared not just to learn that verse, but to put it into practice, to store up God's word in your heart so that your heart will be transformed from a hard heart to a heart of flesh. And as I was preparing this, I was reminded of the memory verse that we practiced from Psalm 139 a few weeks ago. And uh, I think June is going to say it to us. And then you can all say it together. So June, thank you very much. June, how do you remember it, June? I liked it so much, the words, that I thought it would be a really good prayer to say at night. So every night when I go to bed, I started to say it. And hopefully I'll be able to do it now for you. But okay. uh, it's very meaningful, I think. It's Psalm 139 verses 23 to 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there are any offensive ways in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Amen. So just stay there and we'll all join you. And for those who haven't learnt it, it's on the screen. <laughs> you were right, you were right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, don't worry. But you see there, it search me and know my heart. So it's a matter of the heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Who doesn't want a way everlasting? Who doesn't want to be renamed as we meet Jesus? Who doesn't want to be reborn as we are born again of the Spirit. And who doesn't want to have this heart transplant? Let's say it together. Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Thank you, June. I think June needs a... We're so grateful for God's word. Don't be fooled. God cannot be mocked. Be transformed by the renewal of God's spirit within us. May he give us soft and pliable hearts, that heart of flesh. We're going to come to sing our final hymn, which again is focusing on knowing Jesus, how we need to know the master. All I once held dear, built my life upon knowing you, Jesus. There is no greater thing. Let's stand and sing together.
pray. Father, to know the power of your risen life. We can pray that. To know you in your sufferings, that's more difficult. To become like you in your death, my Lord, that's hard. And yet by your spirit, we want to live with you and never die. Father, help us on this journey as we get to know you better to experience that transforming power of your spirit in our lives day by day, we pray in Jesus' name.